The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... is written for all. Not only a book about France and Frenchmen. The crimes of humanity do not halt at the red and blue lines of a map. At the hour of civilization through which we are now passing, the real miserables are ourselves. Man is agonizing everywhere and groaning in all languages. Jean Valjean is not the only convicted man trying to escape. He is all of us trying to break our chains. These are not my words, but those of Victor Hugo, whose closing chapters you're about to hear. Jean Valjean, I can't keep up with you. I had no idea the Paris sewers were so vast. Now keep moving, Paul. Keep moving or you'll sink. How are we ever going to get out? And you, carrying Marius on your back. How is he? Can you see? Is he... Is he still bleeding? Oh, his eyes are closed. Keep going, Paul. Oh. And pray for his life. Our drama, The Final Chapter, which concludes Les Miserables by Victor Hugo, has been especially adapted for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keane and stars Alexander Scorby as Jean Valjean, Bernard Grant as Javert, and Amanda Plummer as Cosette. I shall return shortly with Act One. has been a way of life for Jean Valjean for 40 years. Time and again, he has come up against the inequities of that man-made concept called justice. Today, France is in revolt, the streets of Paris a battlefield, and Jean Valjean attempts to rescue a wounded young man, Marius, carrying the boy on his back through that clotted maze of underground sinkholes known as the sewers of Paris. Valjean, it's getting darker down here. Yes. I can still see enough, Paul. Just follow me. Marios must be heavy for you to carry alone. Let me help. No, no, Paul, you don't know the way. You wouldn't be able to keep in step with me anyway. And if we carried Marius between us, it would take twice as long to get out of here. I suppose you're right. I know these sewers. We'll get out. Oh, the water's creeping up over my ankles. Where are we now? If we follow the main stone sewer, we should end up at the river. And once we reach the Seine, it means escape. Yes. yes this, this is the only way. We'd never be able to walk the streets without being shot. Paul, take another look at Marius's face. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'll, I'll stop a moment. I, I need to stop it. His eyes are closed. How's his breathing? Yes. Yes, he's breathing. Yes. We lost a great deal of blood at the barricades. Shall we go on? We must go on. Leave the sewer. Get Marius to a doctor. We can't turn back. What? What's that noise? What? Oh. <laughs> a horse and carriage. Over our heads, up above. In the street. A horse and carriage. Jean, the light is closer. Brighter. We yeah. must be near the end of the sewer. Shh. That isn't daylight. It's lanterns. It's the police. Can you hear you? Who are you? Who is there? Who are they looking for? Quiet. They can't see us yet. The lanterns don't shine this far. Where are you are? We are the police! Arrow! Arrow! That was a near one. What should we do? Exactly as they tell you. Don't move. They're going to find us now, aren't they? 
Can we go back? We are not going back. I must get this boy out, don't you understand? He's dying. But look at those lights. They're coming closer. Listen to me. There are a few side ducts. The police could still turn down one of them to find us. Are they looking for you? The, the police make regular inspections of the sewers. And there's a whole underground world here. We're trapped. See if you can find a large stone or a loose rock. One that will make a big splash. But I can hardly see anything. Then feel under the water. Now be careful, though. Don't move too close to the center of the sewer. It drops off sharply and gets very deep. Better make it two stones. Hurry. Marius. Marius, can you hear me? Oh, where... Where am I? Blessed be the Lord you've come to. Who, who is it? Oh, who are you? Where are we? Shh. Paul, hurry up. I think I found two big stones. How are these? Marius. He's got his eyes open. Who are you? I, oh, I feel so weak. We'll get you out, my boy. We'll get you to a doctor. I can see his face. He doesn't understand what you're saying. Who is there? Come out in the name of the Lord. How good are you at throwing a stone, Paul? We can't hold them off with two stones. No, th there are two side channels between us and the police, about 25 yards up. One goes to the right, the other to the left. Yes. I want you to throw one stone as close to the left side channel as you can. Can you see it? Yes. Where the stone arches get wider. Sergeant, hold your lantern higher. Throw it, Paul, quickly. Go on, throw the stone. Yeah. Did you hear that? There's someone hiding in the channel. Over to the left. Shine the light. Now, Paul, the other stone. <clears throat> no, I was mistaken. The stone is from the right. Bullseye. I'm not sure where. We will split up. One of you come with me to the left. Sergeant, you take the rest of the men to the right. We're bound to find anyone who is hiding it. They're going into the side channels. There they go. Let's move ahead quickly. Marius, are you all right? His eyes are closed again, Sean. Passed out. Keep walking. And pray for his life, Paul. Vergeon, the water is up to our knees. I know that. There's something peculiar about this drain. Seems as if it's filled up a lot since I was here before. Jean, I'm afraid. Now it's up to our waist. Shouldn't we try another way? There is no other way. Jean, we have to save ourselves. But don't talk nonsense. You could never live with yourself if we got out and left Marius to drown in a Paris sewer. I'm going to walk very carefully and slowly now. You make sure his head stays above water. Well, why is it getting deeper? Keep moving behind me. Watch Marius. It's up to your chin. Stop. Stop. Lift up Marius's head. Mm. Lift it up. I'm doing that. Uh, somewhere along here. Yeah. It's got to get higher. Please, Jean. Jean, wait. Just wait. It can't wait. Every moment, Marius is closer to death. <laughs> We're all closer to death. What good is that? We shall drown in the sewer. Ah, yeah. My foot has hit something solid. Wait, I'm stepping up. I'm up on it. It's higher. Paul, I'm going to move over. You try right where I was standing. There. There, there, there. there. Put your foot on it, Paul. Yes. It's... It's like a step up. Slowly now. Move both your feet onto that step. Uh, uh, there's another one. Still higher. I'm on it. Look at me, Paul. Catch hold of me. Yeah. Right, pull yourself up. Yes. I'm on the second step. We're climbing out of the water. Yes, this is the right way. Now, you follow the stone vault. Keep your right hand. On the right wall. It curves around here. There. There it is. The opening is right in front of us. The Lord has answered some of our prayers. But not all. What do you mean? 
Uh, I can even see the reflection of the river on the roof uh, of this vault. Take a second look, Paul. Uh, we can't get out this way. What? Why? Don't you see that heavy iron grating between the end of the tunnel and the sand? I see it, but can it be opened? We'll see. I'm going to slide Marius off my back. Hey. Will you hold him? I'll hold him in my arms. Good. Go, Roger. Let him go. Yeah. Oh, I've got him. He's still in a faint. Oh. And what now? I've had some experience with iron bars. I'll find out how secure these are. Hmm. Hinges are all rusted. That means it's stuck? Yes, yes. It can't be opened? Not really loose, but they look clean. As if the hinges had cut through the rust. What's that sort of brick at the bottom? Uh, that? Oh, there's a, uh, it's a large square padlock covered with rust. I've seen a lot of these in my time. A lock? Yes. Can you open it? There's only one way to open them. That's with a key. Can't bear it. To be so close to freedom. Valjo, what are we going to do? You begin, Paul, by not giving up hope. You watch over Marius. I'm going to shake one bar at a time with all my strength and all my prayers. If I can just break one of those bars, then use that as a lever to lift the grating off the hinges. Oh, you there! Is it them? The police. They must have heard our voices. They're on the side channel. Paul, where are you going? I'm going to run back. If they see me, they won't look for you. Good luck, Jean. Take care of Marius. Hurt! Oil fire! Paul ran back from the mouth of the sewer. A shot was fired from a policeman's gun. And the last that Jean Valjean saw of Paul was the moment he seemed to fall into the deepest part of the sewer. Valjean had no idea whether Paul might be swimming to safety or had been killed. For Jean Valjean and Marius, there seemed no way out. I shall return shortly with Act Two. of the River Seine, and Jean Valjean has been groping his way through that tangled rabblement of the Paris sewers, only to find he is stopped by a rusted, locked iron gate. Above, on the embankment, facing the Cathedral of Notre Dame, stands the man who has been following Valjean for many, many years. But he has no idea that his ancient enemy is in the sewer directly below. <laughs> Ah, Monsieur Javert, do you still wish me to wait here with my coat? I hired you and your horse and carriage, and I expect you to be where I want you to be. Right here. It's six o'clock. Thank you. I can count. It's only that it's getting late, and my horse has to be fed. So feed the animal. I am not stopping you. I didn't have any time to bring oats with me. You remember, sir, that thief ran out of the house, and I happened to be standing at the curb, and you told me to drive after him. He's here somewhere. I know he is. Oh, Inspector Javier, when he ran into that cul-de-sac, I never saw him again. <laughs> oh, quiet, you get here to wait for the inspector. Inspector Javier, I saw the thief run towards the river. Then he disappeared. They all come here. Thieves and robbers. Somewhere along this embankment, there must be a place they disappear into. If I wait long enough, he'll come out. Huh? He will have to. Oh, my poor Marius. I thought I was saving you for my cosette, but I'm bringing you closer and closer to death. Will you ever forgive me? Stay there, and I'll try again to break those bars. <laughs> Who is, who's that? <laughs> I'll take half. Come out of the shadows. Half, chefs. Who's that? Who are you? <laughs> you wish to get out, don't you? 
I'll take half your share. What do you mean, half share? Who are you? <laughs> oh, he asks questions, this one. <laughs> but they're the wrong questions. What you should ask me is how are you going to get out of here? You live in the sewers? <laughs> Let us say... I use the sewers when I am compelled to escape from the law. You can help me? Oh, indeed, I can. This is why I propose to you half shares. What do you mean, half shares? This young man lying against the wall. Huh? Obviously, you have done him in. I can see his clothes were once quite fine, but now he's dead. You wish to escape? Dump his body into the river. I have a key to that gate. Ah, half shares. You can unlock it? Oh, from outside and inside. You, you go in and out of here at will? And I have for years. Uh, here is the key. Take a good look at it. It cost me a lot to have it made, but it's worth every sou. All right. <laughs> Why is this decision you ever made? Where is what you got from him? No, I, I haven't taken everything out of his pockets yet. Yeah. How did you manage to get all the way here? Where did you come from? The barricades of saint Denis. You walked the sewers all this way? Uh, did you say you wanted half? Uh, <laughs> I'll take what I can get. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll go through his pockets. <clears throat> that I don't, not that I don't trust you. Can we hurry? Why? He's not going to open his eyes and watch. <laughs> you said you haven't emptied his pockets yet? I didn't say that. I said I haven't taken everything. Well, what have you got? How much do you have? I'll hold out my hand and you count it. What is that all? One Louis d'or? One, two, three, five franc pieces? One, two, three, four, five... Five double stools? You didn't kill him for much? Eh, I'll take it all. Go on, go on, you can have it. Why are you in such a hurry? I said half share, and you let me have everything. Here, I'll give you a hand and lift him onto your shoulder. Good. Now, I'll show you how easy it is to unlock the gate. The lock is open. Then I pull the bolt back. And voila. <laughs> the surprise, aren't you? Uh, you thought the old gate was all rusted over. That's what I want them to think too. Yeah? I, I keep it oiled. And today there was an inspector right at my heels. I ran down the embankment, unlocked, and ducked in here. <laughs> I can see him, standing up there, wondering where I could have gone. I played tricks with the police all the time. Now, let's have... Out you go. Bon chance. Good luck. <laughs> What do you two think you're doing on the embankment at this hour of night? I'm admiring the beauty of our cathedral. And so you two sit here. The beauty of Notre Dame has left us breathless. Who are you? I am myself. What does that mean? You're standing in the dark. But I know that voice. And I know yours. Stand and identify yourself. I will not stand. This wounded boy needs me by his side. I am Jean Valjean. Yes, you are. And you know who I am. Inspector Javert. You have me. You may arrest me, but grant me one favor. One favor? Again, one favor. How many times in one lifetime do I have to hear you ask me for one favor? Well, Jean, I did not come here looking for you. Now, why must you be under my feet? And who is that person on the ground? It is for him I ask the favor, Javert. 
Do with me as you please, but first will you help me carry him home? He needs a doctor quickly. That's all I ask of you. He looks dead. Pray the Lord, not yet. You brought him all the way across Paris. Here? What for? Javert, will you help him? You brought him to Notre Dame for prayers. Well, Jean, why does it have to be you? I do not want to see you. That carriage waiting up there, is that yours? Can you carry the boy? A few more steps, yes. Then come along. What are you waiting for? Cosette. Cosette. I have brought you Marius. What happened to him? He was wounded on the barricades. His heart is beating strongly. Let me lay him on your bed, child. Get a cloth to wipe the blood from his face. Yes, a cloth. I'll wet it from a pitcher. A wet cloth, yes. Oh, my poor Marius. What happened, Jean? What can we do? On my way upstairs, I asked Monsieur Couferac to run fetch a doctor. I knew, Jean, you look awful. How did you get here? In a carriage commandeered by the police. The police? Yes, my... My old... Friend and enemy, Javert. He's here? Yes. He's downstairs waiting for me. No. No. No, not after all you have been through. You can clean off Marius' face better than that. Wipe it carefully. One would think you didn't care for the boy at all. My dear, darling Marius... Open your eyes. My dears, oh, my dearest, please, I ask of you. His sweet face. Jean, he's blinking. Were I his age and a girl like you were bending over me, I would certainly open my eyes. Oh, Cosette. Dear heart. Where, where am I? You're here with me. Jean has sent for a doctor. You will be well soon, Marius. Marius. Stay with him. The doctor will come soon. He's exhausted. You see, his eyes have closed again. Jean, where are you going? Oh, just downstairs. You are not going away with Javert. I've decided not to. I'll ask him for one more favor. To remain here until the doctor comes. You promise to ask him that? I will. Marius... I promised Cosette's mother to watch over her. Now, when you are well, it will be your turn. Bless you, children. Ah, Monsieur Valjean, is that you? Yes, it is, my dear landlord. Is the doctor coming? I went to his house. His wife said he was still at the hospital. So many injured in the riots. I explained it was an emergency, and she promised to send him over as soon as he gets on. Do you know him? <laughs> Dr. Pierre Coferac? <laughs> I should say I do. He's my brother. Where is Javert? Who? The man in the cape who helped me bring Marius in from the carriage. What did you say his name was? Javert. He was going to wait for me. Oh, he's gone. He paid the carriage, sent it off, and then he walked away. He... he walked away? Why did he do that? Why? That is very hard to understand. It is hard to understand why I, Javert, the right arm of justice, would walk away from Jean Valjean Walk away from my duty as an officer of the law. I could not explain it to myself. Days passed, and I became more and more troubled. The man whom I should have placed behind bars had let me live at the barricades, had refused to shoot me. I was to be executed as a spy, and he set me free. But I could not free myself. Javert, the upright, the impartial. 
the beacon of truth and justice, believed he was unfit, degraded. What had happened to him? Was justice and the law not as powerful as goodness and charity? Valjean had freed him from death, and that was good. And he, Javert, had also been good by letting Valjean go. Yet, for that disobedience to his oath of office, he could not forgive himself. I shall return shortly with Act Three. stands on a bridge overlooking the Seine in the twin shadows of Notre Dame wrestling with a dilemma. Why hadn't Jean Valjean carried out the death sentence at the barricades? Why, after a lifetime pursuit, had Javert walked away from his duty? All week, the policeman had been trying to explain to himself the unexplainable, make himself believe he was still an uncorrupted servant of the law. But all he could see was chaos and ruin. Javert! Jean Valjean. Must I see you every time I look around? I've been looking for you for days. I didn't expect to find you here at Notre Dame. No one at the police has seen you all week. Where have you been? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I have walked almost the length of the Seine through Paris. You were looking for something? Yes, yes. But you didn't find it? No. You were looking for peace of mind. Is it any concern of yours? Yes. Javert, our paths have crossed so many times. And I, even as an animal hidden in the forest who looks back at the hunter and wonders why he is aiming the gun at him... I have an affinity for my killer. My duty? I never hunted you as an animal. What I am trying to say is, yes, you are a concern of mine. It was peace you walked all week to find? Yes. You won't find it in a week, Javert. I haven't found it in a lifetime. The young Marius. How is he? Mm. He gets better every day. He's beginning a new life. How I envy him. You don't sound like the Javert I have known for so many years. I don't know which Javert I am. It's you, Jean Valjean, who have come between me. Between me and order. And sanity. Where I always have been able to see clearly cause and effect. Good and evil. Right and wrong. Now there... Is a cloud that obscures my beliefs. I have done that. The day you appeared on the embankment, my instinct told me, arrest him. But how could I do that to someone who would save my life? If I accepted my life from you and repaid you with life imprisonment, I would be no better than you. I, too, would be an escaped convict. Do you remember the bishop from whom I stole silver when I got out of Toulon? To help me, he told the police he'd given me the silver, but he gave me something infinitely more precious. Belief in the goodness of man. I had suffered 19 years for stealing a loaf of bread, and in one single minute, that bishop took away all my bitterness and black thoughts. You believe what some old bishop once told you? Yes. I've moved to a garret where I live by myself. I gave Cosette and Marius my old rooms. I have a pair of candlesticks I light every Sunday. Those silver candlesticks have been with me always. They remind me of what he said that no harm can come to anyone who understands charity. It's you who doesn't understand. I'm faced with two roads, whereas all my life there's been but one road, and now there are two, and that's what terrifies me. Look at me. I'm trembling because I do not know what to do. 
I should lock you up. But I cannot. I cannot. And the law demands of me that I must. Perhaps there is a higher law. Not an eye for an eye. But love for love. Love of my fellow man. Be he criminal or innocent. I... I... I don't understand that. It's simple. Our Savior understood it. You ask too much of me. Jean, my obedience to the law has been everything. And now I have broken that law far more than you ever did. I close my eyes to duty. I set a prisoner free. And that is why I, I despise myself. I do not understand my actions any more than I understand why you... A desperate man whom I have followed to persecution and who could have avenged himself. Why you let me live? Like you, I had no choice. Don't you see, Fergeon? I, Javert, am not the millstone around your neck. It is you who are the stone around mine. It is you who are weighing me down and ask, please, please go. Walk elsewhere the rest of the evening. Leave me alone on this bridge. And perhaps during the night, I will see a glimmer of a star in the water below. And perhaps I will understand. doing this time of the morning, sitting on a bench by the Seine? I, I spent the night here. What? Sleeping? No, thinking. Oh, Paul, Paul. Where did you disappear to that day in the sewers? I jumped into the water and stayed there till the police left and then started walking. Found an open manhole, climbed out and finally got home. And Marius... I brought him back to the house where I used to live. My Cosette is taking care of him. Oh. The doctor says his wounds will heal soon. How oh, he must be very grateful to you. Would you mind telling me why you spent the night on the bench? It's complicated, my boy. I happened to run into an old acquaintance of mine near here last night. And when I left him... He left me with a great deal to think about. So I sat there, and before I knew it, I, I was asleep. Jean, look at that crowd gathering on the dock down there. The place that rents the rowboats. Yeah. What? They're pulling a body out of the water. Oh, some poor drowned soul. Yes. I have a feeling... Paul, would you mind... I want to go down and have a look. Interesting how the awareness and the soul can hover over one's old body. There I lie on the dock, the gray, lifeless skin in a heap of wet clothing. Down there, on earth... They say the Almighty punishes for self-destruction. That hell awaits you. The hell is on earth, not here. No longer do I have to choose. The choice is made. I wait for destiny to take me by the hand. Do you know him, Valjean? Yes. You knew him well? For many years. Yes, he was always there. Like a menacing shadow waiting in the corner of my life. So he was not a friend. He has an old face. And he was not old. He died before his time. Perhaps he was murdered. I don't think so. 
But if murder is the word, he did it. Killed himself. Mm -hmm. I see. He must have been a very unhappy man. He was. Paul, let us go to Mass and pray for his soul. for this day, but it's worth waiting for. <laughs> Listen to Mary. Oh, Mr. Paul Cosette. A wedding party with my two dearest ones. What more could I ask for? Cosette, my darling, come away from the window. I'm afraid he's not coming. How do you know? Why is it taking him so long to walk over from the church? He wasn't at the church. Jean wasn't at my wedding? Well, he wasn't feeling well... He told me a few days ago he wouldn't be able to attend our wedding. Why didn't you tell me that? I didn't want to upset you, and, and we'd made our plans for the date. You led me to believe Jean was right there in the back of the church. And he wasn't. Well, how could you do that? Where is he? Well, I suppose where he lives. He needs me. It's not right that he doesn't live with us. I've said it over and over. And now where is he on the most important day of my life? Why didn't you tell me Jean said he might not come to the wedding? Not to receive his kisses and his wishes? Jean Valjean is a strange man. If he says he wishes not to intrude, that he prefers to live alone, he means it. He's a very self-effacing man. Paul, you mean well, but I love Jean, and I always will. I hardly remember my mother. He has taken care of me, put me first above everything. He has always been my whole family. May I... May I propose a toast to Cosette and Marius, to a romance that began in the Luxembourg Gardens and survived the riots of Paris. Your health. <laughs> health. Thank you, Paul. Cosette? Cosette, what is it? The glass fell right out of your hand. Are you all right? I'm worried. Marius, Paul, will you excuse me? I must go see him. I must see him now. Today would not be complete without his blessing. My dearest, dear grandfather. Cosette, Cosette, I'm not your grandfather. I've told you that. No, you're not. You're my whole family. I'm so sorry. I am. Oh. To see you lying on this bed in this awful room with no one to take care of you. It isn't right. Where would I be without you? <laughs> You're starting a new life with Marius. Huh. Imagine another knock on my door in one single day. You're my very first visitor, and now there's another. I'll go see who it is. Marius! My darling, I came because I, I had to speak to Jean. Jean, I... I don't know how to say this. I have done you a terrible wrong. Oh, Marius, stop. You made Paul promise not to tell me that it was you who gave me my life, carried me through the sewers. He broke that promise. That was stupid of me, I suppose. Yes, it was. You gave Marius back to me. And then he told me that, that you could not have executed the spy Javert because the man was found drowned in the Seine. I, I'm so very ashamed, Jean. I judged you falsely. But we shall make up for that. You are going to make your home with us. Marius. Oh, my darling. Jean, I owe you so much that I can never repay. You are my grandfather as you are Cosette's. Oh. And now oh, we will pack you up. and children. We will have a carriage below, and before you know it, you will be out of this miserable garret. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know if I... If I could get up and walk now. I'm not very well, really, my children. I feel so weak. Yeah, but before we do anything, Cosette, I want you to take the two candlesticks from the mantel. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, take them. They've inspired my life all my days. You and Marius... Keep them wherever you live and light them on Sundays. 
and pray for me. I, I love you both. I'll have the coachman come up and help us carry you down. They're beautiful. I have always loved them. And I will keep them burning for you. Jean? Jean! Oh, no, don't. Oh, please, don't go yet. Oh, Lord in heaven. It was as if my mission in life had been achieved. I never left the garret. But suddenly, my spirit left my body. And I was above the earth. Beyond unhappiness. Beyond cruelty. Beyond man. I say one last prayer for those of the world who suffer without reward. For I die a happy man. With respect, we have brought you the final chapter of the Mystery Theater's adaptation of Victor Hugo's immortal book, Les Miserables, a book which took the author 19 years to complete. And it was only one of a shelf of his novels, verse dramas, and poetry, all of which entitle him to the reputation of one of the great figures of world literature. I shall return shortly. the Mystery Theater's enviable record of bringing you the best of radio drama today. We have begun our ninth season with Victor Hugo's Les Miserables. To his publisher, the author wrote, I have written for all nations. Social problems overstep frontiers. In every place where man despairs, where a child wants a book to instruct him, where people need a hearth to warm them, my book, Les Miserables, knocks at the door and says, Open to me. I am hope. I come for you. Our cast included Alexander Scurvy, Bernard Grant, Amanda Plummer, Bob Caliban, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.